Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today we have something in Realism Overhaul and Kerbal Space Program. This is a nuclear-powered cruise missile. Now, this is supposed to be something a lot as clone of SLAM, right? Supersonic Low Altitude Missile, which was a concept that was promoted in the 1950s, 1960s. The idea is, initially, it would be lofted into the air using a number of solid rocket motors. One design had three different solid rocket motors, the other had a single Minuteman booster. Now, once it got up to about Mach 2, Mach 3, inside the ramjet would kick in. But this wouldn't be yeah, an old-fashioned, you know, hydrocarbon-fueled ramjet. No, this would be one where the air is passed over a nuclear reactor, generating about 600 megawatts of energy. And then that would, of course, expel the air out of the back, enable, to, enable the missile to basically fly along at about Mach 3, for hours and hours and hours and days and days and days, a very long time. Now, obviously, I'm talking about this old US concept because a certain Russian president has been trying to impress the voters in the forthcoming completely fair Russian election. So they have been uh, talking about new concepts for evading US anti-ballistic missile systems. If you remember, back in June 2002, the US withdrew from the ABM Treaty, and since then, a number of countries have obviously decided that they would like their missiles not to be shot down by uh, US defences. And so I guess at least one of the concepts is a nuclear-powered cruise missile that can cruise at Mach 3 for a very long time. But on the US side, Project Pluto was basically abandoned because conventional ICBMs were going to be much more efficient and reliable. And hey, it's actually very hard to find a place to test something which is powered by a nuclear reactor and flies at Mach 3 at a, a thousand feet. So normally it would actually cruise at about 10,000 feet or above, flying along at high speeds. Once it got towards its target, it would bring itself down to about a thousand feet above the surface, so that it would presumably remain below radar level, but with the huge amount of power that was available via that nuclear reactor, it would in theory be able to travel around Mach 3. Of course, I say in theory because this was never tested. This version in Kerbal Space Pro Program plus Realism Overhaul can't quite manage that. It just simply isn't generating the thrust required, and. I didn't bother to go in and tweak the parts to make this possible. This is incidentally part of the SXT mod. Uh, you, you can get that without realism overhaul. But the design with the intake on the side is clearly derived from the SLAM design rather than early Project Pluto visualizations that I've seen. So here we are cruising along at low altitude. And many uh, writings on this have described how scary these things would actually be at low altitude. Just passing by at such high speeds would generate huge, huge shockwaves. However, I've also said, seen things about talking that being under this thing as it flew over would give you a lethal dose of radiation. And back of the envelope calculation says, no. Compare it against the Davy Crockett mini nuke, which would kill you if you were in about a quarter mile off it. That released the same amount of energy as this released in 100 seconds. So you would have to either be very close to it or spend a lot of time next to something that's traveling Mach 3. So there, it is entirely possible, but it's pretty rare. Also, given that it was an open cycle nuclear reactor, yes, there would be uh, fallout and stuff coming out the back, but again, it's traveling at about Mach 3, so the density of material that it's leaving behind is very, very weak. Certainly, it's not something you want to do to your friends. Look, the real effectiveness of this would be that it could steer between multiple targets, evading air defenses, and then it would launch its individual warheads. Again, there were multiple proposals suggested, but uh, this one here, I've put in about 16 different warheads, and the warheads would actually be shot out of the top of it using little rocket motors. They're rather like a submarine, so these things would shoot up and then they would drop onto their target, and of course that would give the missile the time it needed to get away. As it happens in this case, these missiles were a little, or these thrusters were a little overpowered and the things went way higher than I expected. Still, it's kind of cool watching these things deploy out of the top. I'm doing this in rapid succession because this is a short video, but in theory it could fly for hours between each target and drop a nuke. And of course, once all the nukes were deployed, it would still have one trick up its sleeve. 
after operating for hours, that reactor would be very radioactive. Now, actually, the flight time of the operational missile would really be constrained by the inertial guidance system, because the inertial guidance system, they lose accuracy slowly over time. So the longer it stayed in the air, the less accurate it would end up unless it had a way to reset these things. But yeah, this one decides to terminate its flight over some airfield and leave a whole bunch of debris falling through the air. For this, I obviously switched on unbreakable parts just so you could get an idea of all those chunks of broken nuclear-powered cruise missile dropping all over the landscape and making one heck of a clean-up problem. This is the nose cone, incidentally. To make this thing aerodynamically stable, I had to put about half a ton of lead in it. Anyway, I did a lot of the flight testing for this design last night on a live stream, which was pretty entertaining because of its propensity for breaking up under aerodynamic stresses. Oh, you know what it is, actually? Okay, that, that roll is because we get some sort of offset. It's, it's off-center here. Okay. Oh, man, I did it again! No! No! <laughs> <laughs> I was getting so used to flying that thing. Anyway, the real project ran from 1955 to 1964 before it was cancelled. They never built a flying vehicle. They did actually test the ramjet, though, in 1961. The testing was, of course, carried out at Jackass Flats, home to many other far more realistic nuclear propulsion systems. It's also worth mentioning that the fuel elements were made from a ceramic mix with uranium dioxide, which was manufactured by Coors Porcelain Company. Yes, that is the same Coors responsible for Coors Brewing, and uh, the US's terrible reputation for beers in the 20th century. Thankfully, in the US, bad beer and nuclear ramjets are largely a thing of the past. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.